our last video, we added functionality to edit a listing. Similarly, in this video, we are going to be able to delete a listing. I'm just going to copy paste this icon so that we have something to launch the deletion action. And instead of a pencil, I'm going to make it this little trash can. If we preview this, we can see that these are all spaced evenly, but actually I want both of these on one side and this on the other side. The way we need to do that is by grouping these two items in a row container. I can rename this group icons and I want to fit with to content. That's all it takes. If we preview this, we can see that it is exactly how we want. Now, when I click this, I want to launch a pop-up that will confirm that I want to delete this listing. So let's set that up. Here, I'm going to have a pop-up. I want it to be a column, and I'm, and I'm going to add 32 pixels of padding on all sides. I'm just going to say fit height to content. Let's add a piece of text. This will say something to the effect of, are you sure you want to delete this listing? And then I want to show the address of the listing in question so that the user knows exactly which listing they're trying to delete. I'm going to say fit width to content, remove the height and say fit height to content, and I'm just going to put it in the middle. Let's add another text. This will actually show the address, but it will be a blank for now. And we can center align that as well. Lastly, I need a button, delete. This will be the confirmation that we need and it will actually launch the action. And I want the min, the, it to be a fixed height of 48. Now I can take this and remove its min height. It'll condense to just fill what's inside of it. And then I want to add 32 pixels of gap spacing. I feel like that's too much between this and this address text. So I'm going to group these elements in a column and edit that column to only have eight pixels of row gap. Okay, in order to understand which listing we are trying to delete, we need to have a type of content listing here. This is exactly what we did with the edit pop-up and I'm going to just launch that workflow. When this icon is clicked, we are going to display data in our pop-up listing, which I'm going to go ahead and rename right now. I'm going to display the current cells, the parent groups listing, and then I'm going to show our pop-up delete listing. Now that it's got a type of content, we can make this show the pop-up delete listings listings address. I want to preview this. We can click this button. This is Rainbow Drive. And we see this and we see our address. Now let's add the functionality to make this delete button actually delete our listing. I'm going to start a workflow. And under data things, Bubble comes pre-built with this option to delete a thing. You need to give it a reference, so I'm giving it the pop-ups listing, and then it will find that in the database and delete it. So I'm going to delete this Laurel Oaks drive. If we look in our data, app data, 
we can see that right here. I'm going to click delete. We no longer see it in the repeating group. And if we refresh it here, I guess we already don't see it anymore. One thing I noticed is when we click button delete, all we did is delete the listing. We actually first have to reset the data. Not first, we have to also reset the data and hide the pop-up. Now, the problem is, what if I want my user to be able to recover their listing? Or what if we have offers on these listings? If we were to just delete these listings, these offers would be abandoned, orphan data. That doesn't really connect to anything, but they just exist. There are two ways to counteract this. One is to make sure we tie up all loose ends when we delete a listing. So we would delete all the offers that had the listing as this listing. Or there is to soft delete. Here I added a field called active and it's a yes or a no. Here instead of deleting the listing, we can instead make changes to the thing and set it to inactive. Set active equal to no. Here I can take this listing, I can click delete, and I can delete it, and we still see it here. But if we look at our database, this was Memorial Drive. Memorial Drive is now not active. So all we need to do is on our repeating group, add a constraint. We will cover this more in our video about search functionality and filters, but essentially when it's doing a search for all of the listings in the database, it'll also check that this condition is true. So for each of the listings that it finds, it's going to check that active is equal to yes. And if it isn't, it's not going to include it in this repeating group. This is the one that I deleted, and when we refresh, we can watch it disappear.